Welcome everybody to the last day of the BEAM Summit. Uh, my name is Elena Cuevas and I'm the Solutions Engineer leading Confluence Integration and Solutions Strategy with Google Cloud. Today I'm going to show you how to build streaming pipelines with Dataflow and Confluent Cloud, so stay tuned. All right, let's take a look at the agenda first. I'm going to first talk to you a little bit about the new data and motion paradigm that Confluent Cloud is pushing as our new mission. Then I'm going to give you a brief product overview for those of you that may have not heard of Confluent or that might not be too familiar with it yet. And then we're gonna dive right in into the fun stuff. So I'm gonna give you a demo and we're gonna be talking about the problem that we're solving. And at the very end, uh, I'll take all your questions. All right, so let's talk about data in motion. Our mission at Confluent is to help our customers set their data in motion. Today, the digital realm is as important as the physical world and how business is transacted. And we have seen that firsthand during the times of the COVID pandemic, how quickly enterprises must, ha must face this reality. Because the world and the customers never sleep, enterprises must operate 24-7. And this requires connecting, storing, analyzing all the data that underpins every business as well, 24 seven, anywhere and in real time. Previous technologies like relational databases were designed for data at rest. Whereas at Confluent, we have created a new technology category and a new paradigm to set data in motion and to analyze the data in real time. This new paradigm for data in motion is centered around event streams and streaming analytics and processing. Here, data is not static and at rest, but continuously evolving and continuously bringing process and analyze in real time. In today's world, the fundamental notion is that data is not moving, not that data is moving, not sitting at rest. At Confluent, we are helping the world's largest organizations to make streaming part of their own DNA. Here are a few logos that you might recognize from some of our customers. So whether you're shopping, making a payment, driving a car, it's pretty likely that somewhere there's a store by Kafka and by Confluent behind the scenes. But to be clear, though our journey started with, Kaf with Kafka some years ago, Confluent is much more than Kafka nowadays. Confluent is a cloud native and complete platform for data in motion and event streaming. And Confluent is available everywhere. In on AWS, Azure, and GCP as a fully managed zero operation service. You can also run Confluent in your own data center. And beyond the core functionality of Kafka, Confluent also includes managed KSQL DB for stream processing and streaming analytics, managed connectors to other cloud services and third-party systems like databases, and then enterprise security and data governance, infinite storage for your data streams, and so much more. So let's take a look at the product itself. At a high level, what do our customers really like about Complement? Fundamentally, there's three differentiators. We're cloud native, we're the complete package for all things streaming, and we're enabling customers to stream to and from everywhere. This lets you, for instance, implement your streaming analytic use cases end to end and with reliable real-time access to all the relevant data that is collected from across the entire organization. And like I said, customers can choose between one, a fully managed cloud, cloud product in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, and two, a software product they can run themselves in their own data centers. And of course, they can also use both. Why both, you ask? Customer can also interconnect this to, customer can also interconnect this into a global central nervous system for event streaming. And this is becoming actually a critical component of the cloud migration strategy for many of our largest customers because it allows their new applications to connect their input and output back into their existing legacy systems on-prem without requiring a big migration or a big lift all at once. Both Confluent Cloud and Confluent Platform are subscription products where they dispense skills with usage. So we basically grow with your projects. We're proud to be a part of a large ecosystem of event streaming. These are several there are several dimensions for ecosystem, and one that is very important for streaming analytics is connecting your data that sits in your existing systems and databases to the digital nervous system that is Confluent. So this is about real timing your databases and systems, so to speak. And we provide a large number of such 
ready to use connectors from the ones that we create ourselves, but also together with our official partners and also the Confluent community at large. So as you can see here, all the popular systems are covered. We have it in Mongo, Elastic, Google BigQuery, Splunk, et cetera. And like I said, we have also built a large part of network, but not just for those aforementioned data connectors. Something I'm really excited about in particular is how we are doing cloud and technology partnerships, such as the one I'm highlighting today with Google Cloud. This allows us to create better products, cover a large number of use cases, and make everyone's lives easier with things like integrated billing through different microplaces. All right, so why do you care? Uh, we provide a complete product so that customers can implement use cases end to end with our technology. For example, for developers like this audience, we provide clients and APIs, the many connectors that we just talked about uh, in the ecosystem section, and of course, streaming analytic database, KSQL DB for streaming analytics and stem processing. And I know you all also don't want to worry about the operational stuff either. That's why we provide UI-driven tools for management and monitoring, as well as autopilot features such as self balancing clusters that minimize all of that operational performance. So that, so that you can build Kafka-based systems regardless of how big or small your teams are and regardless of the expertise that you have in the team. So I promise you that that part was, wasn't going to take too long. So let's just jump into the fun stuff, shall we? All right, let me explain the problem first. So let's say we have a website and an application that collects entries for a raffle. So think about a raffle that operates kind of like a radio system. Like, I don't know, maybe we're not driving that many places anymore, but I used to listen to the radio in the car and they'd be like, caller number 20 would be the winner for something. So think of a system like that. Uh, we'll have some predefined winners that the marketing team will upload into BigQuery. So, oh. so we'll have some predefined winners that our marketing team will upload into BigQuery. So like participant number 35, participant number 200 will win. And those will get put into this provision table that you see on the top right. And we will use Beam to join our entries as they come. As they come through Kafka for, with the promotion information that's coming from the program. We will take this information back to Confluent, back to Kafka uh, in a different application topic so that they can communicate, so that the application can communicate the decision back to the user. And we can also add the information to different topics, for example, work that connects to our CRM so that other marketing teams can maintain that contact information and use it for different purposes. Finally, we want to retain some of that information into our data warehouse for in BigQuery for historical purposes. So because this is a developer audience, let me actually drill down a little bit into what this pipeline is going to look like. So like I said, we're going to have this application right into a Kafka topic that I'm calling entries. That entries is going to turn into a peak collection called entries. And I'm also going to have a different peak collection of winners that's coming from that promotion table that I was talking about in BigQuery. I'm going to rekey that information in BigQuery, and you'll see that that's needed. And I'm going to window my streaming data into, in this case, 60 second windows, just because it's not a very processing high, <laughs> high throughput uh, connection. All right, and then we're going to group all those two by the key, and we're going to send that part of it back to the application so that it can communicate back to the user. And part of it, we're going to keep for history purposes, like I was saying. So it's going to go back into BigQuery. And then, like I was saying, this is not part of the demo, but we could maybe send it to another topic so that we can connect it back to Salesforce or whatever it might be. So let me do the demo part now. Uh, I'm going to play a video for you. And we're going to talk about the code a little bit later. To get started, we're going to make sure we create a Confluent Cloud cluster. To do so, we're going to add a cluster. And basic should do fine for this demo. We're going to create it in Google Cloud. And then we're going to give it a name and just launch the cluster. And that's it. We have a cluster spin up. If you haven't created yet a Confluent Cloud account, 
You can do so simply by going to the Google Cloud Marketplace, in this case, and you're just going to look up Confluent. After a few seconds, my Confluent cluster will be running and I am going to create an API key for my producer to be able to send information to the cluster. I'm going to input the details of the keys just created to access my Confluent Cloud cluster into this beam demo.config file that I'm going to reference for my producer. And then I'm going to start producing 5,000 messages to my entrance topic. Here's what a Beam demo config file could look like. You'd have your bootstrap server URL with the port, as well as your security protocol defined and the API keys that you would have defined in Confluent Cloud. All right, we can see that flowing. And we can see those messages populating into my interest topic. Now we're going to go back into the Google Cloud console and we're going to go into BigQuery. And here you can see I've created a data set called promotion. And this data set contains a table called daily gift card winners that the marketing team will populate with the information of the winner numbers as well as the promo codes that are associated to each day. In the Google Cloud Platform Console, I will also have defined a KMS ring. This Google Cloud KMS ring contains the keys that are going to help me encrypt and decrypt my API key information that I'm going to populate into Dataflow. You're going to see why this is important later. I am now again going to create new API keys that I'm going to use in my data flow pipeline. To encrypt your API key using your key ring, you're going to use a curl call to the Google API, where you're going to reference the project where the key ring is located at, its location, as well as its ID and then the name of the key that you want to use to encrypt it. Note that for this to go through, your key has to be in base 64. Okay, I think it's time for us to inspect the Beam pipeline that we're gonna put together. First of all, I want to call your attention to the decryption of the username and password using the key, the same key ring that we already used to encrypt it. Next, I want to call your attention to how I'm setting up the properties to connect to my Confluent Cloud cluster and setting the identification algorithm as well as the security protocol. And then I'm giving it a connection string that will contain the username and password, AKA the API keys that we just decrypted. Next, we create our data flow pipeline. And now connecting to our Confluent Cloud cluster should be easy. We just need to use Kafka.io to read from our Confluent Cloud topics. And here I'm giving it the bootstrap server URL. I'm giving it the name of the topic that the producer was sending information to. I'm giving it the properties that we saw a couple of steps above. And I'm giving it to string deserializers so that my pipeline knows what to do with the messages that come in. I'm windowing the data every 60 seconds. And here I'm getting the promotion information from BigQuery. This points to the table and the data set that we just saw on Google Cloud Platform. Again, and matching the window size of the streaming data that's coming in through my Kafka topic. Now I'm joining both collections. The collection of streaming data that comes from my Kafka topic and the collection of promotions that comes from my BigQuery tables. 
joining both of those, I will get the information of who won the raffle for today. Here, I'm writing the winner's information to a new table that I create in a new data set. And here, I'm sending the information back to Confluent. Again, I have my Bootstrap server, the name of the topic I want to send the information to, the same properties we had to find at the very top, and my two serializers. I'm going to set this verbose constant back to true so that we can see the information flowing down the Cloud Console logs. We compile our program. And once that's done, we launch our pipeline. Our Beam pipeline is now successfully running in Dataflow. And here we can see the graph view of the steps that I just walked you through. We have a step to read the promotional information from the BigQuery tables, as well as a step to read the streaming data from the Confluent Cloud topic. Then we have the step that joins them both. And then the both steps that go back into writing into a new Confluent topic, as well as the one that logs the winner information into BigQuery. We can check the application logs to see that we have received winners, that we're inserting those into a key value pair back into Confluent, and that we're also inserting them back into BigQuery, as well as the process entries. In BigQuery, we can see that a new daily entry table has been created. And we can use this table to determine who has been a winner in the past. Back in Confluent Cloud, we can see that a new application topic has been created. And this application topic is receiving the entry information joined with the winner information that we extracted from BigQuery. And that is all. Hope you enjoyed this demo and you will receive information where to locate the code for this demo. Okay, so hope that was as fun as I had making the demo. Uh, you can see two QR codes and two GitHub URLs down here. This is uh, the GitHub repo in case that you want to try this by yourself. As of right now, the only Read me that you'll find there is basically this video. So <laughs> replicating it might be a little bit challenging, but there is a expansion of the demo as well as a very thorough blog post coming on at the end of this quarter. To get started. No. All right, so that is it for me.